Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances to you. All glory to Sri Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisances. All glory to Sri Who is this Gaur Angi Davi Dasi? Mm. Anyway, okay. So we we'll, we can begin. Yes, really. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Goravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasati Kaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So, on behalf of our founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And this evening, we're going to go on to chapter number 17, entitled, The Divisions of Faith. So those of you who attended the class yesterday, at the end of chapter 16, Lord Krishna described the importance of Shastra. Chapter 16 was describing the divine and the demoniac nature. And it was said if you don't follow scriptures and you don't accept the authority of scriptures, then that is the demonic nature. So this leads to a question put by Arjuna in the beginning of the 17th chapter. And it got been, uh, what is it, 
Arjuna inquired, O oh Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of scripture, but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in, in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance? So, just to review, chapter 14 was describing the modes of nature and we learned the importance of cultivating the mode of goodness. Then chapter 15 described the banyan tree. And in the top part of the banyan tree are people in the mode of goodness. And in the lower branches of the banyan tree are people in the mode of passion and ignorance. So chapter 16 was telling how people with divine nature, godly quality, are in the top part of the tree and the demonic people are in the lower regions of the tree. So now, in the 17th chapter, Arjuna is asking, where in the tree, where in that banyan tree will be people who worship with faith but don't follow scripture? Arjuna wants to know, are, are these people in goodness or passion or ignorance? So Lord Krishna replies, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, according to the modes of nature acquired in, by the embodied soul, one's, one's faith, faith can be of three kinds, in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance. Now hear about this. So, Lord Krishna is replying that some people may be in the mode of goodness, some may be in the mode of passion, some may be in the mode of ignorance. But if they're not following scriptures, they're not going to be in the mode of pure goodness. They're not going to get free of birth and death by following their, by doing their own, by just having their, following their own method of worship. Hmm. So they're either in, they may be some goodness, they may be a lot more passion and a lot more ignorance. Uh, 
แต่ว่ามีระดับปัญหากับวิชาเยอะหน่อย Okay, going ahead. So Lord Krishna describes. He is going to describe to us how we can understand what mode of nature a person is in. How do we know who's in the mode of goodness, who's in the mode of passion, and who's in the mode of ignorance? But one way you can know is by looking at the type of food they eat. Right? Some people will eat food in the mode of goodness. Some people will eat food in the mode of passion, and others will eat food in the mode of ignorance. So, the qualities of food in the mode of goodness is described. Right. First of all, food in the mode of goodness will be juicy, it will be wholesome, and fatty and pleasing to the heart. And, and then the effects of eating food in the mode of goodness, first of all, it will increase the duration of life. And then also it will purify, it can give strength, health, and satisfaction. So you can understand what kind of food will give these kind of qualities. It, it should be it best best of, it will be natural food it will be foods grown on the land just like grains and vegetables and fruits these things then they they give these qualities <laughs> But food in the mode of passion is described too bitter, sour, and very smelly, pungent. Mm -hmm. mm. Sometimes we, we see people, they're eating something which is like a smelly tofu, you know tofu, bean curd, smelly bean curd, and it smells really terrible. But some people love it, they like it so much. So, and then other people, they like their food very salty or very hot or very dry and burning. And the result of that kind of food is 
you get a lot of disease, you get a lot of distress, you get a lot of suffering. And food in the mode of ignorance is described. It's it, will, it can be tasteless, no taste, and it can be decomposed. Food which has gone bad, it's been sitting around a long time, and it may be putrid, means it's gone bad, and it may be the remnants of untouchable things, like animals from the, the parts of the flesh of animals. And the effect of that kind of food is you lose your mercy and you sleep more, you become very lazy, symptoms of the mode of ignorance. So people who are in a particular mode, who are people like who are in the mode of ignorance, they'll be fond of eating animal flesh and seafood, the different things which they take from the sea, it's all putrid or it's, you know, it's decomposed, it's, it's not pure, it's not healthy. People eat anything. Some people they eat anything. They don't care what it is. Anything which walks on the land, anything which goes in in the sea, lives in the sea. Anything which flies in the air, they'll eat it. So this is that's a mode of ignorance. The proper food for people is food in the mode of goodness meaning food which is grown on the land, like grains and beans and, and, and uh, fruit and vegetables. So we can understand a person's nature by the type of food which they take. You want to know what mode of nature, who's in the mode of goodness, who's in the mode of passion, who's in the mode of ignorance? You just watch and see what they eat, where they eat. You can understand their nature. Another way we can understand a person's what mode of nature they're in is by seeing what kind of sacrifice they perform. Uh, All right, so sacrifice, we say, we would say yagya, a yagna. What kind of yagya are you doing? Uh, so, first of all, the mode of goodness, it should be performed according to scriptures. 
It should be done as a matter of duty and without desire for any reward. So, so the proper sacrifice in this Kali Yuga is to do Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. The, the, the devotees in Malaysia are organizing a kirtan for Nishringa Chaturasi. For several days they're going to do kirtan for several hours a day up until Nishringa Chaturasi, right? And I think also Thai devotees are going to take part. So the, the proper yagya sacrifice is to chant the holy name. And we should do, we do the chanting without any desire for anything in return. Every day we want to have some kirtan, perform the chanting, do the kirtan. Every home there should be kirtan going on. It's, it's not just when you go to temple you do kirtan. You have to do kirtan at home. Of course, now you, we, we cannot go to temple so easily because lockdown, temple is closed. So you have to do kirtan at home. So it's, it, this is the mode of goodness, you perform kirtan every day out of service to Krishna. But if you do the sacrifice in the mode of passion, sacrifice in the mode of passion will be done for some material benefit. Or it may be for the sake of pride, out of pride we're doing it. We want people to see why well, I'm very pious, I'm very religious, I'm doing this sacrifice. So material benefits may be in this life, to get some benefit in this life, or to benefit in the next life. So this is the nature of the mode of passion. You want to get some result. Actually, sacrifice is meant for the pleasure of Vishnu. We do it for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, not for our own benefit. Then sacrifice in the mode of ignorance is described that is done without regard to scriptures. You don't follow any scriptures. And if we don't distribute prasadam, that's also the mode of ignorance. Uh, 
Sometimes Prabhupada would be giving class when he began his preaching in America and he would have only one apple. He would cut it up and give everyone a piece of apple. And if we do the yagya without chanting the Vedic hymns, that's also the mode of ignorance. Of course, Hare Krishna mantra is a Vedic hymn, so chant Hare Krishna. And if we do the yagya without faith, that's also the mode of ignorance. And then finally, you have to give some, some payment, you have to give some donation or something to the priest in gratitude for their doing the yagya. It doesn't matter how much you give. You can give as much as you like or as little as you like. Sometimes people like to give cloth. They give cloth to the person who did the yagya. But you have to give something in appreciation for the service of the priest who did the yagya. So this un you can understand the difference with different modes, goodness, passion and ignorance in performing a yagya. It's not that everybody who does a yagya is in the mode of passion or they're all in the mode of goodness. It depends. You have to look at the qualities of nature, of the, the, their mentality in doing it. Now two people may be doing the same yagya, one may be in the mode of goodness, one may be in the mode of passion, or one may even be in the mode of ignorance. So you have to consider the, the state of mind and the consciousness of the person. Then austerity is also a, ma a method by which if we look at people doing their different austerities, we can see some people do austerity in the mode of goodness, some do in the mode of passion, and some do in the mode of ignorance. So, in the mode of goodness, again, people in the mode of goodness, they're doing it because they just, they, they don't, they don't want any material benefit. They're doing it simply for the, for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. Just like a devotee of Krishna will, will do, they'll observe fasting on holy days, like Ekarasi and Janmashtami. Krishna, 
หรือว่าวันจันมาสตมีเรียนเรียนวิธีการแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงแสดงสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยเพื่อให้คริสนาทรงพึงพอทัยไม่ใช่เพื่อความสุขของตัวเองอันนั้นเนี่ยอยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บางคนอาจจะทำเพื่อความสุขของตัวเองแต่บาบางคนเนี่ยก็จะปฏิบัติสมถะไปเพื่อเป็นการโชว์ให้คนอื่นเห็นว่าตัวเองเนี่ยเป็นนักปฏิบัติความเพียรนะเป็นนักบุญนะอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเพื่อโชว์คนอื่น They 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 will let everybody know that that oh they're very great they fasted for so many days and they want to be honored and worship because of it เราจะคิดว่าเขาเนี่ยถือศีลมาหลายวันมากแล้วเพื่อให้ผู้คนเนี่ยยอมรับแล้วก็นับถือเขา So that's the mode of passion you do it out of pride อันนั้นเนี่ยอยู่ในระดับปัญหา But then the austerity can also be in the mode of ignorance and that is and people do some austerities which torture the body in which uh, Destroy, injure or injure others. They do some austerities to bring harm to others. แล้วก็ในระดับอวิชชาเนี่ยก็คือการปฏิบัติความสมถะไปเพื่อทำลายผู้อื่น We can see on the left a picture of Haranyakashipu. He did austerities for a long time, and he wanted to get material benedictions. เราสามารถเห็นได้จากภาพข้างๆนี้นะคะคือตัวอย่างของฮิรัญญาคาชิปุตซึ่งเขาเนี่ยทำกับทำสมถะไปเพื่อที่จะทำร้ายคนอื่น So he he tortured his own body by doing such great austerities เขาเนี่ยปฏิบัติความสมถะอย่างหนักมากเพื่อแล้วก็เหมือนกับทำร้ายร่างกายตัวเองมาก All the flesh on his all the flesh on his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, so the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was eaten away by ants. Oh, the skin of his body was The Prachetas. There were these brothers, the nine brothers, the Prachetas, and Lord Shiva gave them instruction, and he told them about how to meditate on Lord Krishna. Okay, so these Prachetas, they were very austere. They went into the bottom of the sea, and they meditated in the bottom of the sea for a long time. And they they didn't do it for anything material. They did it to please the supreme Lord, to meditate on the supreme Lord. Okay. Now we're going on to the next one, chapter 17, text 20 to 22, describe about charity, which can also be in different modes. แล้วก็ในส่วนของบทที่ยี่สิบถึงยี่สิบสองเนี่ยก็บรรยาอธิบายถึงทางให้ทานซึ่งการให้ทานเนี่ยก็แบ่งเป็นสามระดับเช่นกัน So some people think oh it's alright give charity it's very good you give charity you help someone 
but it may be in the mode of ignorance. So one should be, one should know what is the proper, who is the proper people to give charity to. Just like charity in the mode of ignorance, it's done at an improper, at the wrong time to an unqualified person and without proper care and respect. Just like if we give charity to someone, uh, they may take the money and they go and buy alcohol or buy some cigarettes or drugs. And so we have to know who is worthy to give charity to and who is not. Of course, devotee likes to give charity. Our charity is we like to give the holy name to everyone. And of course, sometimes we also give prasada. Not everyone, however, likes prasada because some people are very big meat eaters and they don't like to eat vegetarian food. So sometimes we have a problem in giving out food that people say, no, I want meat, I don't want this, I want meat. So in that it's better just to give the holy name. Then charity in the mode of passion is done with the desire to get something back in return. Somebody thinks, I will give a hundred rupees donation and Krishna will give me back a thousand rupees. And often we find businessmen, people with a business, they will give charity and they will hope that they will get it back in return, that, they, that they, whatever they give it will come back with interest in return. And if we give charity in a grudging mood, that we didn't really want to give the charity but we had to give it, they forced us, so that's the mode of passion, it's not good charity. But what, what is good charity? The mode of goodness is when people will give charity without any expectation of return to get anything back. They will give charity out of duty. And they will give charity at the proper place and at the proper time. And they will like to give to a qualified, worthy person. 
So you can see in the picture, in the top picture, you can see Bali Maharaj. He was asked to give charity to Lord Vamanadev. Bali Maharaj had a guru. You can see his guru there giving instruction, his guru in, with the beard and the grey hair and the white cloth. And his guru was called Sukracharya. Uh, Bali so his guru had told him that if you give charity to the brahmanas, it will be very good for you. You'll get a lot of benefit by giving charity to brahmanas. So Bali Maharaj gave a lot of charity to brahmanas and he became very successful. And with his army of demons, they conquered the demigods and they took control of the heavenly planets. So then Lord Vishnu took the form of a Brahmana boy and he came as Lord Vamanadev and he came asking for charity. And he, he was asking Bali Maharaj, I just want three steps of land. So the guru of Bali Maharaj, the guru was telling Bali Maharaj, don't give him charity. This is Vishnu and he's come to cheat you. He'll take everything away. But Bali Maharaj was confused. He said, well, look, you told me I should give charity to the brahmanas. Now he's come. If, he's, if he is the Lord himself and he's come, I should give him. He said, if I don't give him, if he's the Lord, he can, he can take it away. So Bali Maharaj said, it's better I give him voluntary rather than have him take it. So, so Bali Maharaj had a problem here because his guru is saying, don't give him, but and before his guru was telling him to give. So Bali Maharaj decided he would disobey his guru and he gave charity to Lord Vamanadev. And Lord Vamanadev took, with two steps, he covered the whole universe.
But this was to the credit of Bali Maharaj. He became famous because he surrendered everything to Lord Krishna. So you can see charity in the modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. The best charity is to give charity to, a, to the Krishna consciousness. Right? We give charity to this for Krishna consciousness, then that's the proper time, the proper place to give in the temple, you give charity to the temple, to the temple or to the devotee there looking after the temple. That is charity in the mode of goodness. And the good, there's auspicious time to give charity, like special days, like when there, maybe when there's an eclipse, it's, uh, there's a, an eclipse of the sun or the moon, then we can counteract that inauspiciousness by giving charity. And the nicest charity is where you give it and you don't tell anybody. You do it without letting people know. But Krishna knows everything. So we want to understand, be careful in giving charity and do it in the mode of goodness. Okay, so here's a, a statement <laughs> about giving charity. Even if one distributes 10 million cows in charity during an eclipse of the sun, so you're giving charity. If you give cows, that's a very good charity to give. It's considered a very good charity to give cows. But you have to give cows to a qualified person. You cannot give, give, give cows to anyone. You have to give cows to someone who will take care of them. And so giving charity, giving cows, you have to be very careful. You have to make sure the cows have a good place to stay and they can get proper food and they can be looked after. So when there's an eclipse of the sun, that's considered inauspicious time, but that's a good time to give charity. Five thousand years ago, when Lord Krishna was here on the planet, Lord Krishna came from Dwarka all the way to Kurukshetra to observe an eclipse and to do yagya and to give charity. And 
ณาเนี่ยส่งส่งเสริมตรงนี้ตอนที่พระองค์ทรงอยู่ที่ดาริคาเนี่ยแล้วก็ตอนที่มีมีเหตุการณ์สุริยุปราคาเนี่ยพระองค์ก็ทรงสอนให้ให้ฐาน Okay, so and then then it says one may live at the confluence of the Ganges and the Yamuna for millions of years. So if you live there for such a long time, this very very. A very holy place, very purifying, and you stay there for a long time. You get a lot of purification, a lot of piety. Or you may give a mountain of gold in sacrifice to the brahmanas. Giving charity to the brahmanas. The brahmanas are proper people to give charity to, because the brahmanas are concerned with spiritual duties. They're not going to use the money or the gold for anything material. Brahmana, เนี่ยเป็นบุคคลที่ควรค่าแก่การให้ทานเพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยจะเอาไปใช้ในการในชีวิตทิพย์ไม่ใช่เพื่อวัตถุ So if you give a mountain of gold to the Brahmin, that's a lot of gold. You're giving away a lot of wealth. It's a big charity. But he does not earn one hundredth part of the merit derived from chanting Hare Krishna. So the chanting of Hare Krishna is the greatest charity to give to anybody. So that's why we organize sankirtan parties to go everywhere. To go out and chant Hare Krishna and to give the holy name to everyone. It's the, the greatest benefit we can give to people. Just simply hearing the holy name. Even they don't chant. If they simply hear and they see the devotees chanting, it's very, very powerful. They get great benefit. But of course, chanting Hare Krishna could also be done in the modes of nature. Some people chant Hare Krishna. They just want to get recognition. They want to be famous. They want people to respect them and honor them. So they chant Hare Krishna. And some people chant Hare Krishna to get rid of their sinful reactions because they did a lot of bad things. So they want to cover up, to take away their bad karma. So they chant Hare Krishna to nullify their sins. But pure chanting of Hare Krishna is done simply. For the pleasure of Krishna. Hare Krishna, 
We're calling Lord Krishna by chanting his holy name. We're calling, we're getting his attention. So this is a benefit of chanting the Maha Mantra. All right. Are there any questions today? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, the number of pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. อาจารย์ค่ะพรุ่งนี้เป็นวันประสูติของสีตาเดวีค่ะอยากให้พรุ่งมหาราชแนะนําวิธีปฏิบัติหรือว่าจะสินสําหรับพรุ่งนี้ห
can speak about how Lord Ramachandra proved the chastity of Mother Sita. After he killed Ravan, he brought Mother Sita and they built the fire and Mother Sita walked out in the fire and Agni, the fire god, brought out the real Sita from the fire. And Sita was born also from the earth, right? She came from the earth. She, she was not an ordinary, it was not an ordinary birth. But she came as in the family of a great king, Maharaj Janaka. So there are many things to be talked about, Mother Sita. You can talk tomorrow and glorify Mother Sita. Yeah. Another question? Yes, good. We got you Namata Di Madhavi Pavani Mati Deva Muti Nam. We got Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Sunita. Ajur Sunya Bonus. Mataji Hare Krishna. Ajur Sunya Mataji Bonus. Ajur Sunya Mataji. Ajur Hare Krishna Dana Guru Maharaj. Mataji made a question in your job. Oh, Maharaj the Bonu word. Job name, subject to the Uh -huh. So that is because of your own, you, you, you know, because you don't have proper control over your mind and you've not properly understood the process of chanting the holy name. <laughs> เอ่อสวดเมื่อค่อยได้แล้วถึงแม้ว่าการสวดมนต์เนี่ยเป็นอะไรที่ยิ่งใหญ่อย่างที่ได้อธิบายไว้เมื่อกี้แต่ทําไ
So you have to control your mind and you have to make your become more disciplined and force yourself to keep chanting and to sit and keep chanting. Just like people in the mode of passion, in the mode of passion, a young man and a young woman, they're very, oh, they're so happy together and they're enjoying and everything. But then after some time, very quickly, they start to argue and fight with each other and they hate each other. So, that's the mode of passion. So you have to be, you have to come up to the mode of goodness. And you have to get to the mode of goodness by keeping chanting. Don't give up the chanting. So you're influenced by the mode of passion, but you can come to the mode of goodness by chanting and by being regulated, go every morning to temple, or if you can't go to temple, then you have to do Mongol Arti on your own. You still have to get up early in the morning. Even you don't go to temple, you still have to get up. Don't sleep late. But if you start something and then give it up very quickly, very easily, that's the mode of passion. In the, in the beginning, it's like nectar, quickly it becomes poison. But the mode of goodness, in the beginning, it's more like poison but gradually it becomes nectar. Okay, next question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, what is the difference between a person who follow the Shastra uh, scriptures and a person who do not, if both are under the influence of the gunas of material nature? So the person who is following the scriptures is in a better situation because he's, he's acting in the proper manner according to scripture and he will get he will attract the attention of the pure devotees who will instruct him and help him to advance. He's got the right process, he's following scriptures. He may be influenced by the modes of nature, but if he keeps following the scriptures, gradually he can be elevated. Okay, next question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, 
่แต่ว่าวิธีที่เขาปฏิบัติเนี่ยมันถูกต้องแล้วเพราะฉะนั้นวิธีที่เขาปฏิบัติเนี่ยมันจะค่อยๆนําพาเขาให้พัฒนาระดับจิตสํานึกของเขาขึ้นไป Yes. Next question. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Hare Arjuna. Ah, a few na ha. Kue, lo lo lu wa. Lo kuan jat patibat tam kam sang le wa kam nen kam song ha ajar kip kong lao chen ha. ทีนี้มิเชลมีความสงสัยว่าเรื่องของบาลีมหาอาจที่เลือกที่จะไม่ปฏิบัติตามที่พระอาจารย์แนะนำมาเป็นการกระทําที่ไม่ควรหรือเปล่าค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ Her question is we being taught that we should always respect the order of our spiritual master and try to follow what he asks us to do And in the case of Bali Maharaj now, that we can see that he is not listening to his spiritual master. Is this a good example, or what should we learn from this? Well, we should learn that if the spiritual master goes against devotional service, then something is wrong. We should give up the spiritual master. สิ่งที่เราสามารถเรียนรู้จากเรื่องราวของบาลีมหาราชนี้นะคะก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ของเราเนี่ยไม่เริ่มไม่ปฏิบัติตามเริ่มไม่ปฏิบัติตนในการบูชาพระชนาแล้วเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะยกเลิกทางหรือว่าเลิกที่จะเชื่อฟังทันถ้าท่านไม่ได้เป็นสาวกของพระชนา So sometimes we have to be careful. We have to be. We cannot just be sentimental and think, oh, he's my guru. I have to do everything he said. If guru tells you to do something wrong, you don't do it. เพราะฉะนั้นเราก็จะเชื่อกูรูแบบตาบอดไม่ได้นะคะถ้าเกิดเราจะต้องดูด้วยว่าถ้าเกิดว่ากูรูเนี่ยสั่งสอนสั่งให้เราทําอะไรที่ผิดหรือเปล่าสั่งให้เราทําอะไรที่ไม่ถูกตามหลักการพระเวทหรือเปล่าถ้าเกิดสั่งให้เราทําอะไรที่ผิดเนี่ยเราสามารถปฏิเสธได้ If guru says follow me. I'm going out of Iskon. You just follow me. I'm your guru. Then you know something is wrong. If Guru says we're not going to chant Hari Krishna anymore, I've got a new mantra. Krishna told me a new mantra. Then something is wrong. ถ้าเกิดกูรู้มาบอกว่าเออเนี่ยเราจะไม่สวดฮาริกิชนะมหามนแล้วนะพอดีมาตุนกิชนะเข้าฟันแล้วก็ให้บทมนต์อันใหม่กับฉันมาเราจะมาสวดบทมนต์อันใหม่ค่ะ So sometimes you have to be careful. We have to be intelligent. We shouldn't be blind followers of the spiritual master. พระจันทร์เราก็ต้องใช้พิจารณาอย่างแล้วก็เราจะต้องมีปัญญามากพอที่จะรู้ว่าคําสั่งที่พระอาจารย์ให้มาเนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่ Uh, yes. So sometimes we have to give up the spiritual master. Just sometimes we may have to give up. We may have to leave the spiritual master. บางครั้งเนี่ยเราจะต้องเหมือนกับสละพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ของเราด้วย And you can pray that the spiritual master will come back ถ้าเกิดว่าพระอาจารย์ของเราเนี่ยจะออกไปจากการรับใช้ของพระเจ้าใช่ไหมคะอย่างงั้นเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะสละแล้วก็เราก็ควรที่จะขอพรว่าขอให้ขอให้พระชานเนี่ยพาท่านกลับมา In Iskon, sometimes we see spiritual masters. They they have problems. They get into Maya. So we should be careful. 
we should know when to follow and when not. Okay. Yes. So, still some questions? Yes, yes, yes go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I'm just a bit confused of, mm, about the difference between uh, goodness and the pure goodness. I thought uh, chanting and sangeetana is above the three modes of uh, material nature if it is done just for the pleasure of the Lord. Yes, if it's done for the pleasure of the Lord, that is pure goodness. But if we if we're doing the chanting to get rid of our bad karma and to make up for our sins, then that is not pure chanting, that's the mode of goodness. So the mode of goodness is different from the pure mode of goodness because the mode of goodness at any time you may be influenced by passion or ignorance. But pure goodness will never be influenced by passion or ignorance. I also found the verse for you, Vaishnavi, about the four principles yesterday. First Canto, chapter 17, text 24. Chapter 17, text 24. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. I read this verse many times before, but uh, you have to be, yeah, I didn't relate it with this. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Any question left? Sarat Purnima? Yes, Gurudev. Yes, Gurudev. And also, I think this uh, Mataji, she raised her hand first. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, can we chant uh, while we go for walking? Um, somebody told me that trees are, are they are also souls, so they can also get the benefit of uh, chanting. Yes, you can chant any time, any place, and certainly going for a walk is also a nice way to chant the holy name. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Prabhupada used, Prabhupada used to walk. And Prabhupada every morning would walk for an hour and, and he, like, he would chant. Sometimes he would chant, sometimes he would preach, but often he would chant. But you can walk in the morning, you can walk in the evening, you can walk any time. But chanting can always be done, any time, any place. Always chant. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
ราสามารถเดินได้นะคะเดินได้หรือว่าตอนไหนก็ได้เวลาไหนก็ได้นะคะโอเคเยสซาร์พูนิมาฮาริกิชนาดอนรับประนามกุรุมาราชและทุกท่านนะครับอาอาจารย์จะถามว่าการสวดภาวนาอยู่ในสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติใช่ไหมครับแล้วรู้จักเด็กผู้ชายคนหนึ่งอ่ะเขาสวดภาวนานะคะแล้วก็เขาอ่ะด้วยอันนี้อ่ะเขาอ่ะทำผิดศีลอยู่ด้วยแล้วเขาก็เล่าให้ฟังว่าเขาก็มาเล่าให้ฟังว่าอย่างเงี้ยสิ่งที่เขาทําอันที่เขาทําผิดศีลอยู่เนี่ยมันเป็นอความจําเป็นบางอย่างสําหรับส่วนตัวเขาแต่ว่าเขาอ่ะสวดมนต์ดีมากแล้วเขาจะรู้สึกอยู่ตลอดว่าตัวเองเนี่ยทำผิดอยู่นะอย่างนี้แล้วก็เขาก็พยายามปฏิบัติดีแล้วอย่างเงี้ยถ้าเจอคนแบบเนี้ยเราจะควรจะแนะนํำยังไงแล้วถ้าตอนอในเวลาเดียวกันเขาเลยจะชอบว่าอะไรอะไรเขาอยู่แต่ว่าตัวเขาก็ทั้งนั้นที่ตัวเขารู้สึกผิดอยู่นะอย่างเงี้ยเราควรจะอบอกอะไรกับเขาดีตอนที่เขาบมาเล่าให้เราฟังว่าเขาอยู่ในสถานการณ์แบบเนี้ยเราควรจะอันนี้เขายังไงดีโอเคโอเคเขาไม่สามารถบอกใครได้โอเคอันนี้สุดโอเคเขาคำถามคือมีคนหนึ่งคนที่ทำงานวันที่ดีที่สุดในสาธารณาชันติเขาตื่นขึ้นในช่วงเช้าวันที่ดีที่สุดและเขาทำงานเพียงสิบสองครั้งในวันเขาตื่นขึ้นในช่วงเช้าวันที่ดีที่สุดแต่ในขณะเดียวกันเขาก็ Uh, breaking the uh, regulative principle, like he don't get to follow all four principles, and he he is breaking one principle in in that, and he also feel um, like you know guilty for doing that, but he said that is necessary. That's why he have to do it, and he he come and ask for the advice from her. So, uh, what should be her advice for such devotee? And his life is also getting better. Uh, yeah, like his life is getting better. But then he he inside he he feel guilty for this activity. Yes, and he he try he come and open up with her. What should be her advice for him? She should not spend time with him. Sarad Purnima should not spend time with him. She should tell him. You go and tell him to go and speak to a senior man. It's not proper that he comes to a, 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 a marriage and talks like this. You, she should tell him that He should talk to a senior man like Rahugan is there. Tell him to go to Rahugan and get advice from him. Or he should write to his guru. If he was serious, I think he's not very serious. Uh, just that, uh, that he comes to he comes to um, um, to Sarat Purnima and talks like this. This is not very good. Well, you should not spend time with him, Sarat Purnima. This is not good. If he wants, if he's serious to get instruction, then he has to go to a senior man. If he wants, if he's serious to get instruction, then he has to go to a senior man. 
คำสั่งเนี่ยเขาควรที่จะเข้าหากับสาวกอาวุโสของเขาที่ดูแลอะไร no more questions so yes กูเดียก็เดวดาร์มาพระบุตร จะบริหารกิจนะจะบริหารกิจนะดังนั้นปนามดังนั้นปนามกุลมาราชมาตาจีมีรูปรัชนาโอกีอ่าจูอากิจูอารีนามคุบิเชมาฮีเรสจับไ